The Australian Transport Safety Bureau has published its final report into the mid-air collision involving Piper Seminole Juliet Quebec Foxtrot and Beach Travel Air Alpha Echo Mike near Mangalore Airport, Victoria on the 19th of February 2020. Shortly before 11am, Travel Air Alpha Echo Mike departed from Tyab Airport, Victoria for a return instrument flight rules training flight to Shepparton Airport via Mangalore Airport with a student pilot and an instructor on board. At around the same time, a pilot under examination and a flight examiner at Mangalore Airport, a non-controlled airport in a larger area of non-controlled Class G airspace, were preparing for an instrument rating flight test in Seminole Juliet, Quebec Foxtrot. The weather in the Mangalore area was broken cloud, an indicator that more than half to almost all of the sky was covered by cloud, with a cloud base of about 3,200 feet above mean sea level. After departing Tyab, the crew of Alpha Echo Mike climbed to 6,000 feet and tracked north through the Melbourne controlled airspace before being instructed to contact Melbourne Centre Air Traffic Control. The controller advised Alpha Echo Mike there was no IFR traffic for their descent to Mangalore Airport and later on in the flight passed on traffic information about Juliet Quebec Foxtrot who was shortly to depart from the airport. At 11.20am, Juliet Quebec Foxtrot took off from Mangalore Airport with the pilot under examination contacting Melbourne Centre two minutes later with information that they were passing 2,700 feet on climb to intercept a planned track to Waypoint Lacey. The controller identified Juliet Quebec Foxtrot on their display and provided the crew with traffic information about Alpha Echo Mike, which at the time was at six nautical miles on descent and passing 5,000 feet. The crew of Juliet Quebec Foxtrot acknowledged this traffic information as they climbed through 3,250 feet. While Alpha Echo Mike was on descent and Juliet Quebec Foxtrot was climbing, the two aircraft collided at 11.24am around 4,100 feet and about 8 kilometres or 4 nautical miles south of Mangalore Airport. Sadly, all four pilots were fatally injured. As part of the investigation, the ATSB conducted an aircraft performance and cockpit visibility study to help investigators determine at what times the aircraft may have been visible to one another and what effect human performance limitations and the aircraft structure could have had on the visibility of the opposing aircraft. This is a simulated reconstruction of the mid-air collision as viewed from the left pilot seat on board Alpha Echo Mike. As part of the visibility study, the ATSB also simulated the views from the three other pilot seats for analysis. The visual elements were based on analysed ADSB and other surveillance data. Weather has been simulated based on records of the real world conditions and simulates a best case scenario for these conditions. Actual conditions were likely to have been worse than shown in the animation with more significant cloud cover. The simulated cockpit is based on geometric data from a 3D model of an exemplar aircraft. The greyed out area represents a mask of the cockpit structure and the other pilot that would have been in the pilot's field of view. In these areas, the pilot would not have been able to see the approaching aircraft. For the purposes of this animation, the transparency of these areas has been set to 30% to give the viewer a better understanding of where and when the approaching aircraft would have been both visible and shielded. In addition to the vision, you will hear radio communications between air traffic control and several aircraft, including both accident aircraft, that were transmitting on the Melbourne Centre radio frequency. The radio communications have been digitally revoiced from transcripts of key communications leading up to the accident. It should be noted that this is not necessarily what the pilots of the accident aircraft would have heard during the final four minutes of the flight, as they would have been switching between frequencies including the Common Traffic Advisory Frequency and the Aerodrome Weather Information Service for Mangalore Airport, which broadcasts separately. In the lower right corner of the screen, you will see a cockpit display of traffic information, or CDTI display. The CDTI display is what the pilots in Alpha Echo Mike would have seen and heard if the aircraft was equipped with an ADS-B in receiver with a relevant alerting capability. Beside the CDTI display, text of the associated alerts will appear showing what the pilots would have heard in association with these alerts. In addition to displaying a transcript of the radio communications, the centre panel also shows when a short-term conflict alert was received by the air traffic controller. The stacker is an alert received by the controller on their screen indicating a potential conflict between two aircraft.
the controller must assess the validity of the alert and provide information to the relevant aircraft if deemed necessary. In the lower left corner is a satellite view showing the flight paths of the two aircraft overlaid on a Google Earth map. The orange coloured flight path is that of Seminole Juliet Quebec Foxtrot, while the cyan coloured flight path is that of Travel Air Alpha Echo Mike. The ATSB's research indicated that the last opportunity the pilots had to detect the aircraft in time to successfully make an avoiding manoeuvre was 12.5 seconds prior to the impact. As part of this animation, the ATSB has identified the location of the approaching aircraft at this time. Viewer discretion is advised. The collision has not been simulated, with the video ending prior to impact. Alpha Echo Mike, center. Alpha Echo Mike, go ahead. Alpha Echo Mike, shortly to depart Mangalore southbound, or via Lacey, is Juliet Quebec Foxtrot, a Seminole. They'll be on climb to 7000. Juliet Cubic Foxtro copied Alpha Echo Mark. Melbourne Centre, Juliet Quebec Foxtrot departure. Juliet Quebec Foxtrot's identified, verify level with departure. Juliet Quebec Foxtrot, departure at Mangalore 23, passing 2700 on climb to 7000, tracking to Lacey, Mangalore. Juliet Quebec Foxtrot, area QNH 1010. 1010, Juliet Quebec Foxtrot. And Juliet Quebec Foxtrot. Traffic, 6 miles in your 12 o'clock is Alpha Echo Mike, a King Air, they're inbound to Mangalore for air work, passing 5,000, on descent to not above 4,000. Copy, traffic, Juliet Quebec Foxtrot. Foxtrot Mike Mike, Conquer Flight Level 250, no restrictions or requirements, go straight to gun. Foxtrot Mike Mike, Flight Level 250. India Lima November has left Flight Level 150 on descent. India Lima November. And India Lima November. Airwork details when ready. India Lima November. Report airwork details.
India Lima November, conducting airwork at Wagga, in a 10 nautical mile radius, 5,000 down to ground. Call ops normal by 25, or on departure. Requesting any traffic. Traffic. 12 o'clock. India Lima Low. November. Just Two say again the ops normal time. Climbing. Traffic. Correction. Ops normal time will be by time 55. Five. One mile. Climbing. India Lima November. There's no reported IFR traffic for not above 5,000. I'll talk to you again by time 55. Five. India Lima November. The ATSB's investigation identified that, following receipt of verbal traffic information provided to both aircraft by air traffic control, the pilots did not successfully manoeuvre or establish direct communications on the common traffic advisory frequency, or CTAF, to maintain separation, probably due to the collision risk not being recognised. The ATSB determined that it is probable the aircraft were in instrument meteorological conditions at the time of the collision due to the presence of extensive cloud and that the known limitations of the see and avoid principle meant that the pilots were unlikely to have seen each other in sufficient time to prevent the collision even in clear weather conditions. From this investigation, the ATSB strongly encourages the fitment and use of ADSB transmitting, receiving and display devices as these devices can significantly assist pilots with the identification and avoidance of conflicting traffic. When used in conjunction with an electronic flight bag application, ADSB in traffic information can be displayed on a tablet device or a similar display. The continuous positional information that ADSB in provides can highlight a developing situation many minutes before it becomes hazardous, a significant improvement in both point in time radio traffic advice and see and avoid. While ADSB cannot be solely relied upon to display all nearby traffic, effective use of radio remains a primary defence for all pilots in avoiding mid air collisions. Irrespective of whether an aircraft is operated under the instrument or visual flight rules, pilots are responsible for separation from other aircraft in non-controlled airspace. In this context, pilots need to make all required broadcasts detailed in the aeronautical information publication, even if there is no known traffic, and respond to broadcasts if a potential traffic conflict is identified. Read the final report by searching AO-2020-012 on the ATSB's website. To read the cockpit visibility study and to watch the remaining cockpit view animations, search for AS-2022-001. Links are available from the comments section below.